This is the Sigma 70-200 F2A, and if you're a Sony shooter, it could save you $1,300. But Tony and I are gonna talk about if it's actually worth that savings. Yeah, you know, G Master lenses, they always seem to be a little sharper, they focus a little bit better, but we won't know unless we test it. So we're gonna take some portraits and we're gonna try it for sports too, the two main things. And of course, we'll talk about sharpness and bokeh and stabilization. And of course, there's one limitation we already know about, but we'll get to that soon. First, we wanna take a moment to thank our sponsor, KEH. If you're shopping for lenses or cameras, tripods, anything photo related, they have it there used so you know you can get a great deal. And the nice thing about KEH is that you don't have to worry about if anything works or if you're gonna be scammed online. They test everything before you buy it. They have a warranty period. They have a generous return period. So you can be sure that anything you buy at KEH, you're gonna be happy. And you can even get 5% off with the coupon code down in our description. Or if you're selling your used gear, you can get a 5% bonus. Thanks KEH. Let's talk a little bit about the design. I like that the Sigma has an aperture ring on it because that's one of my favorite things. I can get it dialed in quickly before I even turn on my camera. It also seems to have all the same buttons and dials on the side. Like you can de-click the aperture if you're a video shooter and you need to smoothly adjust the aperture. You can set a focus limiter or control the different stabilization settings. But the Sony is definitely lighter. Yeah, it's about six ounces lighter. So if you imagine that in hand, it's about a can of Coke. You might get a little bit heavy if you're shooting a long event like a wedding, but it still feels okay. It's pretty well balanced. And I think it feels good in hand. It feels high quality. Mm. One thing that I really like that they included that's the same as the Sony is that it's an internal zoom. So you don't have to worry about sucking in dust or anything like that. Uh, and it also stays more well balanced. If it were zooming out, then it can kind of get a little tilty, but it feels really comfortable in hand. I should say it is available for Sony E-mount or L-mount, which is like a Panasonic full frame. Let's go uh, take some portraits. I'm using a strobe right now and I'm testing the Sony G Master to look at sharpness and autofocus. So let's see how it looks. That looks good, Tony. You look like um, so professional. And then I'm going to zoom all the way in to 200 millimeters just to see what that looks like. And don't move because I'm going to mark my spot. I'm going to change lenses. Even though we just talked about how annoying all dust is. Just putting the back of the cameras right on the pavement. <laughs> That's going to kill people. And, and twisting cameras. the lens on there while it's on the pavement. It's fine. All right, now let's go to 200. Oh, it looks about the same. And it's snapping right into focus on your eye. Oh, you need to be a little yeah, be short. Let me go all the way out to 70. All right, let me review and make sure. Oh, you look as good as I thought. I would look equally cool on both lenses. Whoa, you look like a professor. Across dozens of photos at a variety of different focal lengths, I just couldn't see any noticeable consistent difference between the two lenses. They both performed great. Sharpness is great. Bokeh is great. There was no signs of fringing or chromatic aberration. Everything's great, but one of these lenses saves you $1,300. Well, no, I want to take some pictures of you, but I want to try it in backlighting to see how it handles that. I moved Chelsea over near these reeds so I get a pretty background, but I'm also shooting into the sun, which you have to do a lot when you're doing portraits in the field, and that's gonna test the contrast of these lenses. Like higher quality lenses will show lots of contrast. With lower quality lenses, the light can bounce around and kind of make the whole picture washed out. And like real life, I've had portrait shoots just completely ruined because I brought a lower quality lens and did some senior shoots or something and everything was just washed out because I happened to be shooting in the sun because I was forced to shoot in the sun. So let's see how they handle it. I gotta actually crouch down here a little bit. One thing I love about a 7200 for portraits is I can zoom in and get a tight headshot. And then without moving, I can zoom back and get a full body shot. <laughs> I can't even see her hands. <laughs> I guess winter's here. This is winter modeling, people. No hands hidden. She's just like one of those robots with the long arms. I look like I'm in a little sleeping bag. Okay, it's maybe you do some kind of pose. It's called like... fashion. I look like a caterpillar. Okay, you look pretty cute. Let me check the lighting. Frank, look, he made fun of me. Look at how he kept the lens on the body. Just still unattached. <laughs> Ready for any kind of accident to happen. The backlit portrait comparison is very challenging. This is really shallow depth of field shot wide open. 
And you know what? I just can't see a difference between the two lenses. Color, contrast, these backlit hairs, they should be covered with weird fringing and chromatic aberration, and there's just none to be seen. The same holds true at 70 millimeters. The contrast seems to be the same. The sharpness seems to be the same. Overall, with some variations depending on the specific shot, not considering price, it's a tie. I'm switching to high speed sync now and raising my shutter speed. I'm up to one two thousandths now because I'm trying to actually be able to see some of the background so it's not completely blown out. Yeah, I don't see any difference in the autofocus. It seems to function just as well. Yeah, I thought it seemed fine. You know what? As I zoom, it doesn't focus continuously. Like the Sony lens, when I'm zooming, it just stays in focus. But this, when I zoom in and out, it takes a beat. Oh, does it? You can see uh, turning on high speed sync allowed me to recover the highlights in the background, balancing the sky better. It also made the lighting from the strobe more dramatic by cutting the ambient light. So I have deeper shadows, just a completely different look. But again, comparing many pictures between different focal lengths on the two lenses, they were basically indistinguishable. I would be happy to use either lens. I also wanna test the focus breathing or focal shrinking. I've noticed that with some 70 to 200s, when you get close for a headshot, they zoom way back. Like I remember our old Nikon lens, at 200 millimeters close up, we measured it at 135 millimeters. There's an easy way to test that and to solve it, which is with an extension tube. Pretty inexpensive, no optics or anything, just spaces the lens a little bit further out. If you look at the metadata, you can see these two pictures were both taken at 200 millimeters and neither Chelsea nor I moved. But this one is much wider angle than this one. This one is about 30% closer just because I added extension tubes. This is the effect of focal shrinking at work. So you can see the Sigma has moderately serious focal shrinking. What about the Sony? The Sony showed almost exactly the same amount. So just be aware shooting up close with either lens at 200 millimeters will produce images that are really about 150 millimeters. And if that's a problem for you, you could add an extension tube. Focal shrinking isn't unique to these two lenses. Just about all the telephoto 70 to 200s that we've tested, Canon, Nikon, they all experience the same amount of focal shrinking. Now, I think we should go take some sports and maybe we can actually warm up a little bit if we run some. Tony, you've got the running shoes on today. <sighs> I guess I'm running. Yep. Before we see how fast and romantically Tony can sprint towards me, I wanna take a moment to thank our sponsor, KEH. They're a good sponsor for us, but they're a great place to shop and sell your used gear. We sell all of our used gear to them because we know we'll get a great deal. We won't get scammed. So if you're looking to sell your stuff, check out KEH. Or if you're looking to buy used gear, you can check out KEH too. And it's no risk at all because not only do they check all of their gear before they sell it to you, they also have a generous return period and a warranty where if anything goes wrong within that time, they'll make it right. And to even sweeten the deal even more, you can get 5% off if you use our coupon code down in the description, or you can get a 5% bonus if you sell your used gear to them. So use our links down below, and thanks, KEH. All right, so now we're going to do our sports test, which is really just Tony romantically jogging towards me on the beach. That's beautiful. As I shoot him, I'm going to zoom from 200 to 70 as he gets closer to me, and I want to see how the autofocus works, how it keeps up. So, are you ready? You got the A1 there, 30 frames per second. If anything can do it, it can. Go. I haven't done a romantic run before. That was <laughs> too romantic. Run. Look, there's a heart here on the sand too. Go. They both seem to track very good. Oh, good. I'm not seeing any issues. But I happen to know I'm tired. <laughs> I happen to know the A1 will only do 15 frames per second with third-party lenses, but it'll do 30 with Sony lenses. It did, this was faster, yeah. So if you are a sports shooter, you might want to get the Sony lens. You okay? Yeah. I think we need to reshoot that segment. <laughs> <laughs> this comparison was not as close as I hoped. The Sony got almost a perfect 30 frames per second with very few shots out of focus. The Sigma, however, produced 
way less than half of the total images and got about one third of the shots out of focus. You definitely can use the Sigma for sports, but if you have the budget, the Sony produces much better results for both accuracy and frame rate. This did well, but besides the lower frames per second, it doesn't seem to work with teleconverters. So a teleconverter basically crops the image before it gets to the camera's sensor. This is a 1.4 teleconverter, and it would turn this into a 100 to 280 millimeter lens, and I would use that for field sports like soccer to get a little extra reach out of it. But when I put it on my Sony cameras with this, they do not let me set the aperture and they don't let me autofocus at all. Like it seems to work, except the Sony body, I think doesn't allow teleconverters to be used with third-party lenses for some artificial reason. Like they just want to push you to Sony, that's my guess. Anyway, you can't use it, the Sigma lens with teleconverters, just be aware. Chelsea, for $1,300 less, do you think the Sigma is a good alternative to the Sony? I think this is an excellent option if you're shooting portraits or events, and it can even be an excellent option if you're shooting sports and you're not shooting on an Alpha One where your frames per second will be limited. If you need to use a teleconverter, then it's probably not going to be a good option for you. But beside those two very specific situations, it's an all-around great lens. I'm happy with it. Yeah, the optical quality, the handling, everything is awesome. Whenever you're buying camera gear, the first place I stop is at KEH because they have the world's biggest selection of used gear. You can find just about anything from lenses, camera bodies, lights at a lower price, but you still get a 21 day return period and 180 day warranty where they'll fix any problems that happen to come up. And I have worked with KEH so many times. I think they have given us $100,000 of just used gear that we've sold them. It's a great way to trade up by selling your old gear and getting something new like this perhaps. So if you do want to shop at KEH, use our link here and use this 5% discount code. Or if you're selling them stuff, use this link and use this to get a 5% bonus. Thanks KEH. If you have any other questions about these lens or if you'd like to compare any other lens, let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, tell your mentors, tell your boss about us. Tell your friends about us. Show us to your kids. Forget Miss Rachel. It's Tony and Chelsea now. <laughs> yeah. You could put our videos on a loop. The kids will learn to love yeah, us. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> and bye.